Hello, brothers and sisters. It is a great day to study the Word of God. I invite you all to join me in exploring through the Bible. But before we return to our discussion, let us have a quick recap of what we learned in our previous study. First, we learned that there is a distinction between the natural offspring of Jacob and the spiritual offspring within the Israelite nation. We realize that God does not choose all Israelites. Only those who hear and respond to God's call are chosen. Since they believe that the promised Messiah has come to save them, thus fulfilling the law to which they were subject. And we conclude that, that God only chose the line of Jacob to fulfill the covenant that he had made to Abraham, and it did not declare them as the elect. Secondly, we learned that God chooses to show us compassion, not because of who we are, but because of who he is. He is God, and what he says goes. We never deserve the gift of life, but God showed us His mercy out of His own free will. He could have annihilated us like the people who were destroyed by a great flood, yet He chose to solve us with His grace and mercy. And finally, we discussed the illustration of the potter and the clay, and we realized that God used the same lump of clay to create persons like Moses and Pharaoh. One was righteous, and the other rebelled against God, although made by the same potter. It means that the fault lies not in the potter, but the clay. Because of our sins, we have disfigured ourselves that resulted in God creating a vessel of rot. Yet, God chose to give us mercy. Through His mercy, He has given us ample opportunity to show Him that we can still obey Him. In the meantime, do you know how God distinguishes the elects and the non-elects among the Gentiles? Does God use the same filter that He used for the Jews to segregate us into the saved and the condemned? Let us continue our study and investigate the choice of Gentiles in the scriptural prophecies. Welcome, dear friends, to another study of Romans with Through the Bible. Let's continue to listen to Paul as he speaks of God's choice of the Gentiles. So let's begin. The Choice of Gentiles in the Scriptural Prophecies This is the final division of the chapter. Paul has made it very clear that the nation Israel was chosen by the sovereign will of God, not because of their merit. God not only chose a nation and not only saved those in that nation who turned to Him, and it's a remnant always, but among the Gentiles He is calling out a people today to His name. Romans 9 25 to 26. And he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there they shall be called the children of the living God. O.C. is the Greek name of the prophet Hosea. This is a quotation from Hosea 2.23 and it refers to the nation Israel. Peter refers this prophecy to the believing remnant in his day which perpetuated the nation. To his people who had turned to Christ he says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that he should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvellous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. 1 Peter 2, 9-10 The second prophecy, verses 26, is from Hosea 1.10 and refers to Gentiles any place on the earth who turn to Christ now and in the future, as James put it, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Acts 15.17 And so God reached into Europe. He did not send the gospel into Europe because the people there were superior, 
some members of different races seem to think that they are a superior people. They are not. The Chinese were way ahead of many of our ancestors at the time were probably in the forests of their land. They could have been the dirtiest, most filthiest savages you have ever seen on this earth. Do you think God carried the gospel to them because they were superior? They were anything but that. It is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth, but of God that sheweth mercy. Verses 16. I thank him for that. How wonderful it is. Romans 9.27-28 Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. A little translation would be, Isaiah also cried in anguish over Israel. If the number of the sons of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant only shall be saved. For he, the Lord, will execute his word upon the earth, finishing and cutting it short in righteousness. The quotation Paul uses is from Isaiah 10, 22-23. Only a remnant of Israel will be saved in the great tribulation period. If you want to see the percentage, there are approximately 15 million Jews today. In the Great Tribulation period, we know that only 144,000 Jews will be sealed. That is a small ratio. While I do believe others will be saved during that period, 144,000 will be his witnesses and a small remnant will be saved. It has always been only a remnant with them and it is only a remnant with Gentiles. Now don't ask me why. It is God that shows mercy. If he saved only one, it would reveal the mercy of God because none of us deserves his mercy. Romans 9.29 And as he says, said before, Except the Lord of Sabbath has left us a seed, we have been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. In the verse Paul is quoting from Isaiah 1.9, this is a startling statement. But it is a fitting climax to the sovereignty of God. Even the elect nation would have been like Sodom and Gomorrah in depravity and rebellion to God if he had not intervened in sovereign mercy and recovered a remnant. What an indictment of proud Phariseeism and proud church membership today. Only God's mercy keeps any of us from going to hell, my beloved. Romans 9.30 What shall we say then? that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. This is a thrilling statement. Gentiles without willing or working found righteousness in Christ because God worked and God willed it. The Old Testament scriptures had prophesied it. As we have seen, Isaiah had said that Gentiles were to be saved. Romans 9.31 but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, had not attained to the law of righteousness. In other words, Israel, pursuing after the law which should give righteousness, did not arrive at such a law. This is a terrifying statement. The Jews tried to produce a righteousness of their own through the Mosaic system. They didn't produce it. Look at the nation today. Religious people are the most difficult people to reach with the gospel. Church members who think they are good enough to be saved, you will never be able to reconcile the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. But Paul is making it very clear here that if you are going to be saved, it is your responsibility. It is whosoever will may come. Mark 8.34 And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. John 6.37 You can come. Don't stand on the sidelines and say, I am not elected. But I have never heard of anybody being elected who didn't run for office. If you want to be saved, you are the elect. If you don't, you are not. And that is all I know about it. I cannot reconcile election and free will. We have to come to a place where we accept that God is sovereign and He is going to do this according to His will. 
and his will is right there is no unrighteousness in him he won't make a mistake men do make mistakes men in government make mistakes yet people believe in them my friend why don't you believe in god he is righteous he is good and whatever he does is right romans 9:32 to 33 wherefore because they sought it not by faith but as it were by the works of the law for they stumbled at that stumbling stone as it is written behold i lay in sion a stumbling stone and rock of offense and whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed the quotation here is from both isaiah 8:14 and isaiah 28:16 the jews stumbled to the gentile the cross is foolishness the one who believes either jew or gentile will be saved the humble mind will come in simple faith the natural man will still try to produce salvation by some natural process he will try to reconcile the sovereignty of god and the responsibility of man as if the puny mind of man is capable and infallible now let's move on to chapter 10 we have seen the present state of israel they are lost and that is their condition today they are lost just as the gentiles are lost the reason is that christ is the end of the law of righteousness now paul turns from the sovereignty of god to the responsibility of man he began this thought in the concluding verse of chapter 9 the present state of israel romans 10:1 brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be saved they are responsible you see they are responsible to god our lord has said to them for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation luke 19:43 to 44 that is the condition of the nation over there today they are surrounded by nations that want to push them into the sea Why you can blame the arab you can blame russia you can blame everybody you can blame god if you want to because he says the reason they are in such a state unable to have peace is that they did not recognize their time of visitation so paul says my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be saved now notice the three great features in his statement one Israel with all they possessed see Romans 9 4 to 5 of religion were not saved may i say that probably 75% of the church members are not saved they are just members of a religious club they are in rebellion against god in that they will not accept the righteousness god offers in christ you can be religious and lost israel had a god given religion but they needed to be saved they had religion but not righteousness they had more than any other nation but they were lost paul's desire was that israel might be saved second israel was savable bengal says paul would not have prayed had they been altogether reprobate they were savable who would have thought that my ancestors in the forests of germany were savable they were as heathen as anyone could possibly be Yet at that time the Chinese had a civilization. Why didn't the missionaries go in that direction? Why didn't the apostles say, "Let's not bother with those pagan Gentiles. They are not even savable." Pagan Gentiles were savable and the Jews were savable also. Third, they are on the same plane before God today as Gentiles and should be evangelized as any other people without Christ. There is no difference today. for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god romans 3:23 the idea of a superior race or an inferior race is ridiculous the ground at the foot of the cross is all level whoever you are your social position your church membership your good works or the color of your skin will not help you without christ you are a hell doomed sinner god is just and righteous when he says that to you perhaps you say I don't like what that preacher said. Well, 
It is actually what God said, my friend. God is putting it in neon lights here. He doesn't want you to miss it. There are those today who believe that the gospel ought to go to Israel first. I think Paul meant that chronologically it went to the Jew first. For the first few years in the city of Jerusalem and in all Israel, there was not a Gentile saved. The church was 100% Jewish. Although I do not believe we are told to evangelize the Jew first in our day, I certainly do believe that the Jew should not be left out. He is in the plan and purpose of God and he should have the gospel. I disagree with a man like the late Dr. Reinhold Neber, a recent liberal theologian who is reported to have said, Do not try to convert Jews. Jews may find God more readily in their own faith than in Christianity. He maintains this viewpoint, so he says, especially because of the guilt they are likely to feel if they become Christians. However, coming to Christ is the way to get rid of guilt. They should have the gospel. All people should have it. God is prepared to show mercy today. Romans 10.2 For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. There are some churches, friend, where the members are as busy as termites. Now on Monday night, they play basketball. On Tuesday night, it is football. On Wednesday night, it is volleyball. On Thursday night, it is baseball. On Friday night, they just have a ball. They have something going on every night. They have a zeal for God. They like to do it all in the name of Jesus. But all they have is religion. My friend, do you have Christ? Have you accepted the righteousness that God offers in Christ Jesus? You cannot be saved on any other basis. You have to be perfect to go to heaven. And I have news for you. You are not perfect. Neither am I perfect. But I am going to heaven because Jesus died for me, was buried and rose again from the dead. He was delivered for my offenses and was raised for my justification. He is my righteousness. I will go to heaven one day because he took my place. Is Jesus Christ your saviour? Forget your church membership for a while. I do not mean to minimize your membership, but do not trust it for salvation. The average church today is dead as a dodo bird. A fellow said to me some time ago concerning the church, I would just as soon go out and play golf on Sunday. Knowing the church he attended, I understood how he felt. In fact, I believe he could be more spiritual out on a golf course than he could be in a service in that church. The point is that he should find a church that is really preaching Christ. Oh, how wonderful he is! How important it is to have a personal relationship to him! Romans 10.3 For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. This was true of Israel. It is true of the average church member today. Dr. Griffith Thomas commented on this lack of discernment. Is it not marvelous that people can read the Bible and all the time fail to see its essential teaching and its personal application to themselves? There is scarcely anything more surprising and saddening than the presence of intellectual knowledge of God's word. With an utter failure to appreciate its spiritual meaning and force. I have seen men, officers of the church, who carry such big Bibles under their arms that they leaned in that direction when they walked down the street. You watched them for many, many years and saw no spiritual growth. They just did not grow. They have no discernment whatsoever. So many church people have no real discernment of what it really means to be saved. Romans 10.4 For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Christ is the end of the law, means he is the goal. Our Lord made it clear. He said in effect, I didn't come to patch up an old garment, I came to give you a new garment, the robe of my righteousness. Matthew 9.16 The Mosaic law was given to lead men to Christ. It wasn't given to save them. Paul said to the Galatian believers that the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Galatians 3.24 The law was not given to save us, but to show us that we needed to be saved. 
it takes us by the hand brings us to the cross of christ and says little fellow you need a savior the law came to an end in christ christ is become of no effect unto you whosoever of you are justified by the law ye are fallen from grace galatians 5:4 william r newell made this statement the law is no more a rule of life than it is a means of righteousness it is for every one that believes which suggests both the freeness and universality of salvation every one universal believeth o oh, the freeness of it why don't you accept it dear friends let's close here let us take some time today to examine our lives that we do not build into our own righteousness but surrender our religion into the hands of christ that we may be a spiritual body his church god bless you well friends i hope you enjoyed today's study of through the bible i hope you are thrilled to know that god chose you too among the gentiles though we were separated from god and once denied the promises meant exclusively for the jews god stooped down to us and pulled us out of the darkness and he did it not because we were worthy of his saving grace but he wanted to show us mercy he knows that our actions will not satisfy us so he sent his own son to save us from our sins he forgave us despite our darkest sins and called us back home he loved us even while we were living in sin and there is no greater love than can stand against it He once looked at us with contempt but now he has become our ally yet we know that not everyone will receive the gift of eternity for God had already decided to condemn those who don't listen to his voice and live by faith and this includes the Israelites as well their present condition was a result of them failing to recognize the visitation God had warned them a million times but they did not recognize the consequences of their actions they failed to recognize the risen christ and because of which god rejected them they were like the seeds that fell on the thorns for a brief moment they heard god's message but the thorns towered over them choking them with the anxieties and pleasures of this world as we come to a close remember The Jews still have a chance to be saved like the Gentiles. Though they failed repeatedly, they are still God's firstborn, and he will save them if they believe and acknowledge the gospel as the truth. You may be astonished to find that the church and religion are in no better shape to strengthen you with the knowledge of God. Though they may provide you with the law that directs you to Christ, but remember such institutions do not provide you with the righteousness of god only god can christ is the only way to make you right with god so follow him and he will lead you right into eternal bliss with god in the meantime how much do you know of the present status of the israelites do you know how god saves the remnants from the israelites and the gentiles to find out Stay tuned to the next episode of Through the Bible. God bless you.